And the topic of my research is Women Health Information Communication Channels in Rural Areas, a study of Kampopi Subdivision, Manipur. My name is Florence Guite, and my supervisor is Dr. P. Hang Singh. The importance of my study, the healthcare provided to rural areas is highly disproportionate to the needs of the rural women and very low as compared to urban areas. Health services being provided through a network of government, hospitals, dispensaries, and primary health centers in the rural areas do not reach or they are remain underutilized by the women. One of the reasons could be due to lack of awareness. This lack of awareness can be overcome only with knowledge disseminated through effective information channels. Therefore, it becomes very important to study the effective sources and channels of health information among the women of the study area for better utilization of health schemes provided under the National Rural Health Mission and RHM. A review of literatures. I have reviewed my literatures under four subheadings. Those are health problems of rural women, nexus uh, health information sources and channels, barriers of health, women health information seeking, and health schemes. You, you may skip the review. Yes, yes, sir. I'm skipping. Yes, yes, sir. I'm skipping. These are the schemes selected schemes and the channels selected for the study. The schemes are uh, JSY, JSSK, RCH2, and Sterilization Compensation Scheme. And the communication channels selected for the study are ASHA, Mobile Phone SMS, Word of Mouth, and Pamphlet in Mother Tongue. And this is the methodology. And these are my objectives. I have seven objectives. Uh, when I explain my findings, I will go, I will read out one by one, so I will not repeat now. And I have uh, four hypotheses, which um, I will explain along with the findings in the later slides. And this is my population of the study. In total, uh, from the four villages, I have uh, 213 respondents. And this is my data collection. Uh, questionnaire method is used for the data collection. And my questionnaire uh, consisted of two parts. The first part is about the background data of the respondent and also on their uh, preference of uh, um, information sources and channels. And the second part of the question questionnaire consists of uh, the women health schemes under NRHM. Uh, so uh, the second part of the questionnaire uh, is distributed three times, that is data collection is done uh, three times with a gap of six months each in between. And this, uh, um, this is the statistical tools uh, used for my study, uh, descriptive statistics, chi-square test, and one way ANOVA test. I'll come to my findings. The first, uh, my first objective is to identify the sources and channels of health information. I, uh, for this, I have um, uh, done uh, descriptive statistics to, um, to, uh, to analyze. So it is found that um, the women identified about 24 different health information sources. And among these 24 um, information sources, the highest ranked uh, health information sources are family members, friends, traditional midwives, pharmacy, neighbors, health workers, community health center, nurses, church, and Anangwadi workers. This finding shows that the informal sources of health information are more popular than the formal health information sources among the rural women of the study area. And uh, four types of um, information channels are identified. Those are word of mouth, ASHA, pamphlet in mother tongue, mobile SMS, and word of mouth. My second objective, to examine the preferred sources of seeking and channels of communicating health information among women in the four villages. 
So this table, um, I have shown the preferred sources and also the preferred channels uh, um, by the women of the study area. Uh, actually, uh, these are the uh, top seven. There are um, more than 20 preferred, but these are the top uh, seven preferred sources. And uh, these are the uh, channels, the right side of the table source the channels. And the most uh, preferred information channel chosen by the women is word of mouth. And next is the ASHA and pamphlet in mother tongue. My third objective is to identify the trusted sources and channels of health information. Again, I have shown the trusted sources and channels in this table. The left side is uh, on the trusted sources. These are the top seven uh, trusted sources. Uh, the first is, uh, the most trusted one is the uh, community health center, that is CHC. Next is the family members and nurses, traditional midwives, fame specialist doc doctors, church, pharmacy. And the most trusted channel is again word of mouth. And next, ASHA and pamphlet in mother tongue, and then a mobile phone SMS. My fourth objective, to measure the perceived effectiveness of the ASHA, mobile phone SMS, pamphlets in mother tongue, and word of mouth in communicating women health information. Here, um, the word of mouth is again perceived as the most effective um, information communication channel by the women. And uh, uh, the rest of them, ASHA, uh, mobile phone SMS and pamphlets, they are also uh, considered to be effective, but not, not as effective as the word of mouth. The <clears throat> objective is to examine if factors like education, age, and income determine the independence seeking of health information and taking of subsequent decision on health matters. For this, an ANOVA test was performed, and the results showed that higher or increase in the education, age, income uh, also means higher level of independence in seeking health information and also higher level of independence in taking health decisions among the women. This, uh, this means that uh, those women who are more educated or uh, older women, older or those uh, with um, more income, they are more independent in seeking their health information needs and are also more independent in taking their health decisions. The sixth objective, to identify the <clears throat> decision makers of women health, particularly in childbearing and sterilization. On matters regarding childbearing and sterilization, uh, the women chose the opinions of um, themselves, their husbands, father-in-law and mother-in-laws, then the doctors, medical doctors advice. So this same finding is also, uh, this finding is also seen in uh, some of the literatures reviewed in the thesis. My uh, last objective is to compare the choice of scientifically approved and the traditional forms of treatments for health problems among the women of the four villages. Here, um, the choice, uh, we, uh, this table uh, shows the, uh, the frequency of uh, traditional form of treatment and uh, scientific form of treatment. So here we can see that the women find, more, um, find uh, the scientific form of treatment more reliable uh, than the traditional form of treatment. We'll come to my hypothesis. First hypothesis, the choices of sources for seeking health information differ from village to village. Descriptive statistics analysis was performed, and it was found that the choices of women's health information sources found that uh, sources in seeking health information differs from village to village. Hence, the hypothesis, the choices of sources for seeking health information differ from village to village is accepted. And hypothesis two, the preference of ASHA as the channel of communicating health information is as high as the preference for other channels like word of mouth, pamphlets, and mother tongue. To test this hypothesis, again, descriptive statistics analysis was carried out, and the study found that the preference of ASHA is not 
as high as other channels like word of mouth pamphlets and mobile phone SMS. Hence, this hypothesis is rejected. The third hypothesis on childbearing and sterilization methods, decisions of the family members are more acceptable than that of the medical doctor's advice. This table, the left side uh, shows uh, on uh, choices of uh, doctor's advice and the right side of the table shows the uh, choice of family's decision. So here we can say that the percentage of uh, choice of um, family members is much more higher than the uh, doctors, medical doctors advice. Therefore, uh, the hy hypothesis on childbearing and sterilization methods, decision of family members are more acceptable than the medical doctor's advice is accepted. My fourth hypothesis, awareness of women health schemes under NRHM varies from village to village. The average percentage of the awareness level of all the schemes for each village was calculated and found that the awareness level of women health schemes under NRHM increased in the second round and third round for all the four villages except the first village or the untreated village. Since there is a significant difference in the awareness level of women health schemes under NRHM, therefore the hypothesis awareness of women health schemes under NRHM varies from village to village is accepted. These are the limitations of my study. Uh, since the study is carried out only in the four villages uh, of Kampupi subdivision under Sanapati district, uh, therefore my findings are based on uh, just these four villages. More villages could also be taken, uh, but due to limited time and resource, uh, that was not uh, possible. Another, another limitation of the study is that uh, the findings are also indicative of only the Tado Kuki speaking community. And I have some, uh, I just put two suggestions for future uh, research. That is, uh, a study can be carried out uh, on the awareness and impact of NRHM, taking into account all of the hill districts of Manipur, uh, because uh, this will give the real picture of the benefits of NRHM to the villages. Who are residing in those remote areas, and the second one is a comparative studies uh, on awareness of on awareness and impact of NRHM in the urban uh, districts and rural districts of Manipur can also be carried out. Um, this will have um, because uh, urban districts um, have better communication facilities and health facility health, health health facilities than the rural areas. So uh, the result of this study uh, could bring out the high disparities of um, health information between the urban and the um, rural districts. And, uh, we have come to the end of the presentation, that is our conclusion. Uh, the implementation of uh, various women health schemes by the government uh, do not uh, always guarantee the successful utilization of uh, in every corner of the country, because in most cases, uh, women in rural areas are faced with numerous hardships and limitations uh, in the form of economic, social, and cultural barriers, uh, which complicated their access to health facilities. Therefore, uh, using the health information communication sources and channels identified in these rural areas by the, uh, uh, by the women uh, to communicate the health schemes uh, will contribute to the effective utilization of the health schemes, uh, particularly among the women in Manipur, uh, because um, Manipur is uh, a state that is considered to be one of the poor performing states in the country in terms of uh, health indicators. And uh, these are uh, my publications. I have two journal publications and um, two seminar, international seminar presentations as well. Sir, thank you. Uh, that, that is my presentation, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, I request our uh, external examiner, Professor Manoj, to uh, uh, I mean uh, to interact with the candidate. Thank you, Florence, uh, for nicely and briefly presenting your uh, thesis. Come to the first slide, thank please. You,
We have nicely covered uh, uh, very briefly entire thesis uh, within few uh, minutes, and uh, your uh, graphical representation uh, was also very good. Thank you, sir. But uh, one thing uh, I would like to mention that whenever you present your work, uh, you have yes, done. Uh, yes, please. So whenever you present your work, uh, you should, uh, because in your thesis, you have given the real picture of uh, area where you have visited and conducted your study. That's yes, photograph sir. to your presentation, because visual we can uh, perceive more. So uh, yes, sir. that add whenever you present next time at conference or anywhere. So uh, okay, if sir. you put your um, map of Manipur, India, then Manipur, your study area. In this way, mm -hmm. you can be able to highlight your location, uh, study area, where you have carried out your study. Yes, and uh, uh, your study is uh, uh, different from traditional library science studies. We have touched upon the uh, information, uh, health information seeking pattern of uh, women uh, from Manipur to uh, your identified uh, uh, locality. And but uh, I have some questions. Uh, you have rightly uh, taken your work. I, thanks to your supervisor and you, and uh, big congratulations to you and your supervisor. Yes, sir. thank and you. Uh, faculty members, scholar of uh, Nehu, uh, Department of Library Science. Uh, uh, during this COVID-19 period also, we are able to conduct your viva. Uh, it was delayed uh, uh, earlier. I wanted to come on 18th March, but uh, somehow due to that uh, lockdown, we could not uh, uh, conduct your viva in time. So, uh, but uh, thanks to your administration, controller of examination, uh, who has uh, accepted our uh, request to conduct viva OC online? So I have two questions to ask. Uh, I have already given in my. Uh, let me. See. Can I clip this question here? Yes, sir. Okay. So should I stop sharing, sir? Uh, Manoji, you, you share your uh, your questions. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You good. can see question. You can read out one by one. Yes, sir. She can answer one. Is it coming now? Huh? Okay. Yes, so sir. I have few questions. Uh, one is uh, yes, sir. maybe a format of a PhD thesis in uh, yes, our sir. cases or. Uh, objectives etc hypothesis we keep in introduction chapter okay. don't keep in a uh, methodology section first my question why you have taken yes. this uh, objective and hypothesis in the methodology chapter one whenever you write paper it will come under the introduction okay, okay. then uh, you have not indicated the period of study what period of study you have taken during what period you have conducted? Can you tell me? Professor Manoj, let me ah. explain one by one. Okay. Hmm. So that, uh, that uh, first question just I sensitive. Or you can read the whole question yeah. and she can uh, answer everything at one go. Yeah, yeah. That also. Uh, okay. So I will ask, then she will answer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or you you can read yeah. all the question and you can answer all yeah. together. So all second question is what was the period of your study? Hmm. Can you tell us, sir? Uh, this the period of my study. Uh, it is from 2015 to 2018. Uh, sir, even though the specific period is not mentioned in the thesis, uh, in my thesis page number 93. Uh, it was mentioned uh, uh, as to how and um, how the uh, the data collection uh, is going to be done. So there it was mentioned that uh, data collection uh, will be, the three rounds of data collection will be done with a gap of at least six months. So okay. since I started my uh, data collection in 2015, um, my uh, the last phase of my data collection was in 2018. 
So from January to December, you have taken three years. In 16, yes, 17, sir. 18, four years. Four years time to complete. Uh, sir, I started in November. I started in November of 2015. Because uh, in survey type of study, period must yes, be measured yearly. Because uh, okay, it can be very if you take uh, in another period. That is okay, why I have asked uh, for your further future study. You can keep this in your mind. Yes, sir. You have already yes, done sir. your good work. No problem. Then, uh, Thank you, sir. third number, why only four villages of one subdivision have been selected? Sir, actually, uh, my study, uh, it is a one on one impact assessment, uh, which requires uh, uh, step by step uh, guidance or hand holding uh, with the respondents uh, throughout the period of the study, sir. So uh, large, large, um, large number of um, respondents, uh, two large number of um, respondents uh, beyond uh, my control uh, uh, will result in um, inaccurate or misleading information, sir. Uh, that's why um, the uh, villages were um, uh, limited to only four. And the other reason is uh, since um, I'm trying to find out the most uh, effective health information channel amongst uh, four different channels, uh, namely this ASHA, mobile phone, SMS, word of mouth, and pamphlets in mother tongue. Uh, the, uh, that's why I took uh, the uh, four villages. Okay. Then fourth question, what was the basic sampling, the selection of sample for the study? Uh, so the, the sampling... The sampling technique will be um, a homogeneous uh, purposive sampling uh, because uh, this type of sampling is um, done um, based on uh, some uh, uh, shared characteristics. So since my data is collected from a very specific uh, set of participant studies, uh, only the childbearing rural women, therefore my um, sampling will come under the homogeneous uh, purposive sampling. Purposive sampling. Okay. Yes, sir. Next question is how you will relate your study from the library and information science perspective? Uh, sir, um, library information science um, studies anything about information uh, or uh, communicating information. So since uh, my research in particular is about the study of information sources and channels, uh, it is very much a part of library information science subject. Very good. Now, next question is why you have not included the role of public libraries as one of the health related information communication channel in making people aware for the health related information. Uh, in your Manipur, uh, public library is perhaps uh, very vibrant and uh, uh, more public libraries are there. And uh, local Manipur Library Association, they are also working for this. So, Public library should be one channel. So I want to ask why you have not included. Yes, sir. Uh, you are right um, about this um, public library uh, in Manipur. But um, my study area is a very remote area. And I have also uh, uh, conducted a pilot study before my actual data collection. And uh, there I have uh, found that uh, no public library was around or no public uh, library was uh, involved in any way. So uh, I, that's why that's the reason why I did not uh, keep the library as one of the source, uh, one of the sources. Uh, but sir, like you said, uh, I think um, uh, it is as um, I can make a strong suggestion uh, for the uh, public libraries to make some involvement or um, in the uh, in the form of some extension services. So I will take uh, I will do that as a suggestion, sir. But my reason for why I don't uh, include it in my uh, my study is because um, no public library was uh, involved or available uh, in the um, um, in my study area. But uh, you should have selected public library also because uh, maybe they are not available in that locality. But here yes, the roles of public library comes. So there may be in district okay. uh, Imphal or uh, other district of Manipur. You should have gone consulted the public librarian, public library librarian, and uh, you should have requested what you are doing for uh, propagating information related to health. 
among the okay, women and uh, other section of the people. Can I can so I add something there? Be also. So then your study uh, more related to your library science. Okay, public library. If one public library should be there, then it is very much cohesive and related to. Can, can uh, the public can... library is definitely there for uh, disseminating uh, health information. Sometimes they are also arranging some lecture program, seminar, workshop, etc., for propagating all such information. So you could have link up the public library. Anyway, you have not done, but in your postdoc, uh, you can add uh, public library to your work also. Now, can I can I add something? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, actually, you know, uh, in Manipur, in record, there is so many things. In record, yes. there is so many public libraries. Every district library also uh, there is a li good uh, district libraries in every district on paper. Now, in reality, what happened is that in this particular district, there is a district uh, librarian whom I know her personally. She has mm -hmm. only one chair and one table, and uh, oh. she goes to office and sit there and come back again. But the uh, the public library movement it also is very strong. I have no doubt about that. They are very strong, quite appreciable. Uh, even uh, our uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Ibohal also is doing a lot of work there. But the yes, movement yes. is confined only to the plain areas. Ever since library movement start in uh, Manipur, it is confined to the plain areas only. And uh, till today in the, uh, in the rural areas, People have not seen or heard of the public library. Like I said, in this particular district, a lady is appointed. She has only one chair and one table. She always attend whenever we have workshops and seminars. She comes. I mean, she is quite, uh, I have spoken to her also that, why don't you do something for this district? It is one of the most backward district in the state. Why don't you do something? She said, uh, they gave me on one, only one table and one chair. I cannot do anything. So that is the thing. That, the, that is the pitiable condition of public library. Very, very pitiable in condition. Many parts of the country. Yeah, very pitiable condition. Uh, the the other thing is that. You see, next question. No, no. Let me let me finish. The other okay, thing okay. is that since such type of uh, established uh, institutions and channels of information are not available, that is why we are. I mean, the scholar has picked up. Uh, uh, alternative unconventional methods like you know SMS and word of mouth whether these things can be used in the absence of such uh, uh, institutions like a public library or a health information center can this type of uh, you know, unconventional channels can be used and how effective can it be that is the idea uh, why this has been done okay yeah, so you could have uh, written uh, uh, limit under limitation section that public library we wanted to include in our study, this study, but due to that ground, it has been not incorporated in yes. detail. That uh, under the limitation part, you should have. Okay. And uh, as per the okay, so line, uh, there is provision to attach to published paper or at least acceptance of those papers. Have you included a paper in your thesis? Uh, sir, I didn't include the whole papers uh, because in a university, uh, we are only asked to uh, submit the title page. And uh, moreover, my publications are all available online. Uh, so that's why I, did, I didn't feel the need to include all the pages, sir. But your thesis, your thesis will be for lifelong. It will be available in, as a record in your library. Link may yes, come and go. Okay. So you must, yes, you should have included that two papers which you have published very good in international journal. Uh, that should be enclosed in your thesis. And uh, okay, I request all the supervisors and scholars in, in coming thesis, they should uh, at least uh, acceptance. Uh, you can, if it is not published, then acceptance and your paper text that you can put what you have communicated to the publisher. So that is a, one of the record uh, which is uh, kept uh, and it will also go to your uh, South Ganga also. So there it will be available. Okay. So one should, because any uh, regulation guideline frames are keeping in, in, in the view of this thing. And uh, 
last one uh, you can what is direct implication of your study for common people and library information center uh, the direct implication of the my study to the common people uh, will be sir, um, an increased awareness on the importance of uh, women health information and also on those um, available uh, sources and channels uh, and, uh, direct impl implication of uh, my study to the library and information uh, centers would be uh, the necessity to recognize the effectiveness of uh, various forms of health information channels, um, including the simple and unconventional uh, channels like uh, the word of mouth uh, or pamphlets in vernacular or in the local dialect. Uh, and um, my, if I go um, a little further, uh, my findings also uh, hinted at uh, revising the channels used for disseminating the um, information uh, because um, it appears that the rural women have uh, uh, little or no use of the books um, uh, that uh, we usually um, provide in the library. So uh, the rural uh, libraries uh, can or should reinvent to accommodate the simple and unconventional uh, ch channels of information. Okay, so your advice to public library librarian? My advice uh, will be to accommodate the simple and unconventional uh, channels of uh, information sources. They should, they should come uh, proactively and participate. They should actually everything is not available but we should also take some effort from ourselves this way we can disseminate the information among needy people okay so uh, my part is over now uh, i would request uh, the faculty members and scholar uh, they can ask a uh, few questions okay Thank you so much uh, from uh, uh, i'll take over from there again there are uh, certain questions raised by the other external expert, which uh, okay. I, which I will, uh, I mean, uh, read one by one and uh, ask the scholar to respond. After that, uh, okay. participants uh, can uh, uh, interact with the scholar. So the first uh, question is, why don't you prepare abbreviation and acronyms in the thesis? Well, you have not included. This is not there. Let her respond. Uh, no, sir. Uh, sir, um, actually, I gave the full form of every abbreviation or every acronym at least once um, in the thesis. So that's why I, did, I was not aware of the need to prepare the separate list uh, for the same. I should have actually, but uh, that's not my reason for not including. Okay, the second is that why do you give tables and figure uh, numbers separately in each chapter? Uh, sir, I gave my uh, table numbers by keeping their uh, respective chapter number as a prefix. Uh, it is followed by a point, and which is then uh, followed by a, another number. So um, I felt that uh, giving the chapter number will allow the readers to easily identify which uh, table comes under what chapter. Okay, the third one is, according to your findings, word of mouth, of mouth occupies the highest position for health information channel. What role can be played by the local libraries in this regard? Uh, actually, um, the rural communities, um, they are very different from the rural uh, regular users, um, uh, which uh, most of the libraries are familiar with. So um, as already mentioned, uh, libraries in rural areas uh, need to revise the modes of uh, communication. For example, um, a person whom they trust uh, can be made to communicate uh, the relevant information uh, like uh, arrival of uh, new books uh, through word of mouth. And even the uh, librarians um, can also aspire to uh, achieve their trust, uh, the trust of the local people. So, uh, yes, sir, that is my um, response. Uh, now, let me add something. If they don't, uh, if they don't read books, if they don't read books, then what is the point of asking them to, I mean, uh, trusted person to inform them about the arrival of books? Instead, the relevant content of the books, which may be useful for the your uh, population, the, your respondents, or the local uh, rural uh, rural areas, 
can be communicate can be, uh, the trusted person can be asked to disseminate this type of information since they are heavily relying on a trusted person okay the fourth one is if churches are an important agent for health information channels in rural areas what programs or activities can be taken up by the local churches um the churches uh, can make um, these health awareness programs uh, as part of uh, their activities or its activities. Uh, so members of the congregation uh, can be addressed uh, in their own comfortable dialects um, by the uh, experts, health healthcare professionals. Uh, uh, and the church can also communicate uh, health information through, through uh, short announcements uh, during the church services. Okay, the fifth one is that the study reveals that and uh, on childbearing and sterilization matters, decisions of the family members are more acceptable than medical doctors advice. What is the reason behind it? Um, the study uh, shows that the women take collective decision in childbearing and sterilization matters, uh, which means they decide uh, this type of uh, they take this type of decision with their husband and their in-laws and the family members. Uh, so the study, uh, the women uh, in the study area, uh, being in a patrilineal and uh, patri patriarchal society, uh, they occupy a submissive, submissive or a follower um, social status than the men. Uh, also, the women in the present study, um, they are barely literate. And they are also not informed enough in seeking health information needs. And also about 90% of them have no income of their own. Uh, so they are financially dependent on their husband or in-laws. And uh, there is also the uh, joint family system, uh, which is a part of their culture uh, where a married woman lives uh, with her husband and the husband's family. So because of all these factors, uh, women rely on their husband and in-laws for taking essential decisions like um, their health and childbirth and sterilization matters. So uh, on, on childbearing and sterilization matters, decision of uh, family members are more acceptable than the doctor, medical doctor's advice. Okay, finally, uh, how will you do follow up actions to implement your suggestions? Um, since I am not a, a health uh, worker uh, and I'm a, res uh, I'm a researcher, uh, I feel um, as a researcher, um, the way, um, the only way uh, or the most important uh, way is to um, follow up uh, by, you know, uh, digging deeper or dwelling uh, deeper in the subject and uh, reporting my findings um, in newspapers, magazines, local papers, uh, with the hope of uh, people, those who are actually in the field, those who are working in the field, um, will, uh, will, will be uh, will be able to use my uh, output, research output, and um, implement them. Are you not open to suggestions for this, the way of implementation? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Bye. Uh, so uh, the expert, now may I request uh, uh, other Respected participants, to unmute yourself, and uh, if you have any comment or questions, uh, to kindly put forward. In chat section, there may be some question. You can see. Yeah. Or you can raise your hand so that I will unmute from here. <laughs> okay, Anjan, Anjan. Okay, Anjan, go ahead. Yes, madam, your topic is quite interesting. Thank you. Topic, uh, my question is related problems of women of rural area, more or less safe. My question is how your research finding is going to help in general. I okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, here, um, the women. Uh, since, uh, I have found that in my study, uh, the women are not were initially not aware of uh, these health schemes, which they can avail. 
but after feeding the information through the communication channels uh, which are used in my study again uh, after that i have collected the data again and i found that there is the increase in the awareness so in that way the women are benefited anybody else Vikika, madam, please ask some question. Maybe the question is there in the chat. Maybe in chat, maybe maybe has asked some question. Can see. You can, uh, you, can see uh, you can see in the chat. One question from maybe is there. Maybe the question is addressed to you. Yeah. <laughs> I can see here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me move. Huh. Yeah. Meban says, uh, uh, what about the role of NGO together with uh, health workers in creating the awareness about uh, health? That means, uh, what yes, uh, to answer. Yeah, this. yeah. 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 Okay. To answer this question, um, I think uh, this I have already mentioned uh, through my findings. Uh, if the NGOs and health workers take and implement my findings in their study, I think that will be helpful. Okay. Who else? Uh, 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 Doctor Smear wants to ask a question. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, congratulations, uh, Florence, on your last presentation. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, just, just one small question. Yes, sir. Uh, based, on your, based on your study. Yes, sir. And your finding. Uh, what do you, uh, you know, uh, feel about, uh, uh, you know, the likelihood of incorporating your uh, findings for the overall improvement of health services in such a remote village? Uh, sir, uh, my study itself uh, even though it is not exactly an impact study but um, in my um, study in those uh, three data collection i have uh, found that uh, there is a, a considerable increase in the awareness sir so, so if there can be uh, um, that much increase in awareness in just a small study i can um, i i believe that um, in the rural for rural other uh, rural areas as a whole um, these communication channels, uh, which are identified uh, in my study, will also be effective. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Who else? Who else? Uh, any more questions? Okay. Should we? We wind up now. Sir, we'll ask one, yeah, uh, one, sir, one question. Okay, yes, one more question coming from uh, Anjan again. Yeah, Anjan, go ahead. Yes, Madam, you have mentioned many health information communication channels. Question is, which is the best way to make aware the rural number of women about better healthcare? Which is the best way? You have mentioned several channels, no communication mm -hmm. channels. Which is the best one to make rural women for better health care? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the best one, according to my study, is um, uh, the pamphlet in uh, vernacular or the pamphlets in the mother tongue. And that shows the, um, uh, the highest level of increase. I mean, the highest level of awareness. So, so that will be the uh, most effective, according to my study. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, uh, Professor Moses wants to ask a question. So, I think I have, a, yeah. Yes, Professor Moses, please go ahead. Actually, it is not a um, question as such, but I just want to give one or two comments. comments. I, I want to okay, appreciate sir. Professor Thank you. Moses. Yeah. First of all, I want to <laughs> appreciate Professor Manos Kumar. Sinhazi, for uh, putting up a uh, very good uh, uh, kind of uh, analysis. He has really gone through the cases line by line. I could see the way 
really commented. So thank you, Manozi. And uh, <coughs> I want to congratulate um, Florence and uh, Florence and uh, the Hansen for the good work. I think it is very commendable. One comment, uh, when Florence was uh, answering to uh, experts' questions regarding the decision making, it is not necessarily that the resource area belongs to a particular society. Of course, that is true. I think uh, when it comes to health care issues and other, you know, um, Women's pregnancy issues is not necessarily this because of the you know the societal setup. The women console the husband or the family members, but they console the family members mainly because the family members, the husband and other in laws, are reliable and easily accessible. And uh, we also believe tribal society will be more experiences of homeless. And another thing, another thing is that uh, the, the, you know, the health workers are not accessible, not accessible at all. So in such kind of situation, I think it is not necessary because the study area is you know, patriarchal, scientific as that. I think the reliability, availability, accessibility to the, the information required are the factors to me. Anyway, uh, we can uh, uh, talk about that later on. Okay, sir. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Moses. Uh, thank you, sir. Sanlang Sanlang eight wants to raise a question to everyone. <laughs> Nowadays, under the NRHM uh, new NRHM new position has been created under the center scheme. A coordinator that is charged with the task to impart knowledge and make aware of the various health related uh, information. Maybe a coordinating with such staff will help a lot in monitoring the way information is uh, disseminated. I think this is a uh, common. So thank you. Uh, yes, suggestion. Yeah, is there any other uh, common suggestions or anything? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, this is a record of uh, participation. At one point, uh, we cross, uh, we almost reach 40 participants. I think uh, we don't have that much of uh, participation even before the COVID-19 uh, lockdown. So this online uh, yeah. lesson is uh, <laughs> a very good thing. Thanks again to uh, Professor Manozi for being uh, innovative and uh, uh, I, uh, I mean, uh, coming to us uh, I mean, at the right time. I think uh, we postponed it and you cannot come physically is better because uh, we are able to do such things and in future also we'll continue to do it. And, yeah. uh, uh, once again, I thank you and I thank uh, my uh, uh, colleagues, professional colleagues and uh, research scholars uh, yes. for participating uh, in this. So with this, uh, with that, with these few words, uh, the first session of today's presentation uh, ends.